All right, so I went to Metacritic just to see. I like to go to Metacritic. I know some people like Rotten Tomatoes or whatever. I like Metacritic. So I went here to see what people are saying. And uh, as far as, like, professionals go, <laughs> critics, there's only one review, but their score hasn't been official, I guess. But user score is pretty low. So I guess I guess it's a... Uh, I'm on point with thinking what I think. So let's first off, let's see what the professional one was. It's multiplayer dot it. They gave it a 70, which okay, that's like a C minus. So yeah, it's a pretty solid game with beautiful graphics and without evident flaws. If you aren't yet exhausted by this type of games, okay. So I agree with that for the first part, but exhausted by this type of games, no, I don't have that feeling against it. I don't know. Let's see what's going on down here. <laughs> Ratio of Legends is the most ambitious RPG game of the last year. With Okay, that just sounds like what the commercials always say. Pretty good, but remains stale later in the game. But some people like games that are fast. But I like games that take time to complete. Okay. Today's review is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. One of the biggest mobile... Blah, 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 blah. And it's totally free. And definitely no P2W elements. I don't know what that means. Currently are almost 10 million... What? What? The, why is this a two? And all it is is the exact ad that they're always doing. Oh, that's something else I forgot to say. The auto, you can auto sim like 30 battles at a time, but it's annoying because it's garbage. It doesn't auto sim. All it does is play out 30 battles in a row at normal, you know what I mean? Like just, if you, if you manually auto them one at a time, only it does 30 for you at a time. So it's like, Anytime I do that, it's like 15 minutes just to do the 30 battles. It's so stupid. It's like I put it on auto for a reason. Like, I'm, I mean, multi-sim for a reason. I want this to be done in a split second, not take 15 minutes. I think that's what this guy's complaining about. Zero. There's an autoplay button. It's like they knew how trash the game and its mechanics are, along with the repetitive ads. I, I clean, complained about those ads that pop up every three seconds. This game is just trash all the way. There's loot boxes, microtransactions, all that shit. Don't play this shit money grab. False advertising, false advertising, and false advertising. This build, this game is built around in-app purchases. Sure is. Do not support this game. I don't really feel the hate like this guy does, but he does have some points. The worst RNG in a game. I don't know. I don't play enough, but... And it's all done with the purpose to make you spend money. Everything you do in the game, you will run into really bad RNG. Pulling shards to summon champions, you only have a half a percent chance of pulling a legendary from their ancient and void shards, and only 8% to pull an epic. Also, keep in mind that there are a lot of trash epic and legendary champs. You can also pull duplicates, as I have done many, many times. Sacred shards are very hard to obtain or pricey, and the chances are only 6%. For legendaries, 94% for epics. Out of over 20 shards, uh, sacred shards I've pulled, I have not gotten one legendary. Only thing I have to say about that is I actually did happen to pull a legendary pretty early in the game. That's the that's the warthog looking guy I have in the first slot. He's a legendary, and I got him. I think I got him out of my first blue shard, and I was like, "Whoa, this is awesome!" But then I got a purple shard, which is a step up from the blue shard, and they gave me some crap character, and I was like, mm -hmm. I guess that was just a one in a million last time. But anyhow, out of over the 20 sacred shards I pulled, I have knock on one legendary. That sucks. Other than summoning, obtaining, and upgrading your artifacts, armor is also RNG. I think that's what I was just complaining about, how it's ridiculous with the stupid fail. For decent artifacts, which are five star and above, it will be very costly to max out. <laughs> oh, that's something else I forgot to say too. Yeah, that's true. Because as you upgrade the, um, as you upgrade your gear, I mean, the, what is it called? Gear? Mods. As you upgrade the mods, um, it gets more and more and more expensive. Like to go from level zero, I guess, to level one, it's like 230 in game coin. But you saw where I was at. I was only going from six to seven, it was almost 5,000. And then to go from like 10 to 11 is like 9,000, and it just keeps going up. It's ridiculous. And it goes up fast. I mean, starting at 230 and you're up to 10,000 by the time you're hitting tw level 12. Like, jeez. And you can fail multiple times. So, like, you know, it could cost you over 100,000 in-game coin to go f one level, essentially, if it kept failing. Anyhow, back to what this guy was saying. Um, multiple times I have used over 1 million silver to fully upgrade one piece. Yeah, I would not doubt it. That's why I don't even try to go all the way out of 9 of Artifact. Out of 9? 
What is he talking about nine, though? There's only six. It takes a considerable time to accumulate that much silver in the game? Sure does. I would have to say probably a day. Well, okay, I don't, I don't know about that. That's only one artifact out of nine for one champ. At a point, you will have several teams doing different things in the game. Whoops, what just happened there? In the game... Oh, jeez, where the heck was I? I just jumped and threw me off. At a point, you will have several teams doing different things in the game. That's a lot of artifacts we'll need to upgrade. Also, there are dungeons where you get potions or rewards which are RNG also. I've spent so many hours and resources trying to get one of the superior potions for a mission because I kept getting other potions or other rewards. Crappy rewards. Knowing how bad the RNG is, the developers spam you with pop-up ads to buy more shards, nice artifact sets, resources, etc. It's really how money-hungry this company is. Everybody in the raid community knows this. They're owned by a gambling machine company. Google it and you will see. Is that for real? They're owned by a gambling machine company? I'm going to have to <laughs> add that in a minute. <laughs> for people who are free to play, that's the only abbreviation I know what <laughs> F2P is, free to play. The other one I said, I don't know what it is, I don't know what I meant. Or don't spend much, you will not be able to compete at a high level because there is a sizable amount of people who spend a good amount of money on the game and have superior champs with superior gear. They beat you, not because they're smarter than you, but because they have spent more money than you. Because... The more you buy, the better your odds become, like buying lottery tickets. If a person buys five tickets and another buys 50,000 tickets, guess what? a better chance. Lol. There's people that spend thousands a month in the game and people who have already spent over 100k. That's insane for a dumb one game. Nah, even if I had that much money, I'm good. Other than the horrible RNG, the game is consistently crashing. Hmm, I haven't experienced crashing. Although this morning when I tried to play, it wasn't working, so maybe, maybe that's part of the crashing kept not loading and you lose energy yeah i wish i could lose energy <laughs> tokens keys battles so after a few crashes within an hour you wonder what the point of playing this game is when you're limited to how many times you can play they don't even reimburse you and customer tech support is non-existent nobody will reply you will never get one response from them ever i've sent them dozens of reports and have not and have not received one single reply ever so before you download this game ask yourself if this is something you want to invest your time in it was pretty thorough. I mean, half of it I agreed with. Let's see. Life Force is another trash pay-to-win game. Yes, I thought they was going to be I in the Fiaga. You know, in your boy, Pekianya, Yevrafi, you know, in the back. Yeah, so. Yeah. I wonder what. Hold on. Give me a second. I want to see what it says on the on the app store now. All right, so here it is. Ooh, I'll just call it Blades looks cool. Maybe I'll end up deleting Raid and I'll start playing this instead. Oh, this looks cool. I'm getting distracted. That looks cool. I might actually play that. <laughs> yeah, so it's got all these good ratings, the one here, but it makes me wonder. I wonder if, like, uh, Raid is buying their own positive re reviews. Let's see what this guy said. This is a positive and great collector battle game. I really like this game. It appeals to me in a lot of ways. The art and animation is very impressive. The wide range of characters and champions is great also. There are different, several different uh, modes of play, including campaign, dungeons, and their arena. The game is fun. It is challenging and requires patience. Fun? I can't agree with that. It is boring to me. It requires patience if you don't tend to drop a lot of money, but I have time and patience, especially during this awful pandemic. Speaking of which, they've been great about that. Wait, they, what? They've been great about that, having given players very nice f free stuff, including lots of energy to give us all something to do while the quarantine was on in full. I often let the game play on auto battle while I do laundry and just make small adjustments when slash if I need to. Really, I love this game. I do have a question for the developers. I've noticed that the arena around, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so how do I check out other reviews? See all, there you go. Uh, about five months in. So about five months in the game. It's been around for politics, blah, blah, blah. It's a great game, no joke. I play this only because my 14-year-old son does and when to play, so I'm in for his uh, points of relatability with the kids, right? 150 bucks, yeah, I paid money. Game itself is fine. <laughs> Some game opinions and suggestions. Great game with a few minor issues. Raid ripoff. Gorgeous game. Only problem is, like in all these games for your phone, if you don't spend real money, you will not be competitive in the arena. It's hard to enjoy up. 
Hmm, fun game, but major flaws. Fun, grindy, and challenging. Sort of disappointing. This game seems to have potential, but there's a fair amount of shallow. Yeah, see, here's the real reviews. People that actually play this. Pretty good game. I mean, pretty game with good graphics. That's about it. <laughs> Trains the batteries if you don't want to spend money. Be ready for lots and lots of grinding. Long and boring. Yes. Long and boring grinding because there's no skip for the stages that you'd be in. You have three stars. Too many heroes. Not enough space to collect them. Yeah, I think I've been noticing that too. It looks like it only lets you have so many characters. So that's just weird. Like, you can't even get everybody. Huh. Yeah, so it seems like the real reviews agree with me, even though this has a 4.7. <laughs> <laughs> this game looks cool, though. Let's just look at this for a minute. This looks cool. Create your city. Ooh, I don't like that, though. I don't have to build a city. I just want to explore and stuff. Hmm. Still could be cool, though. Anyways. Now time to Joe check out its uh, owner. <laughs> Give me a second there. Alright, so maybe Wikipedia is not the best option, but I can't really find any definitive information about the gambling company ownership i have seen it pop up a couple times so it is a common theme i guess that this company is affiliated with gambling in some way but i haven't been able to really dive into that it's trying but so anyways from what wiki has it says polarium is an, is an israeli <laughs> it's a tongue twister polarium is an israeli mobile Social and web-based game developer and publisher known for MMO games including Raid Shadow Legends, Vikings, War of Clans, Terminator Genesis, Future War, Soldiers Inc., Sparta War of Empires, Stormfall, Tornado Domination, and Throne Kingdom at War. Founded in 2009, Polarium is headquartered in Herzliya, Israel, with offices in Israel, Russia, Ukraine, UK, and the United States. The company's social games are available on Facebook. Vakontakti, Adnoklasniki, and Mail.ru. And its mobile games are available on iOS and Android devices. Type subsidiary. Hmm. Yeah, subsidiary of what? Maybe that's what I should type in. Uh, Polarium has, empl has previously employed BAFTA Award winner Jasper Kidd. Known for his work on the video games such as Assassin's Creed and Borderlands to compose music for their own games. In November 2012, Polarium released Stormfall Age of War, one of the fastest growing social games on Facebook. In 2013, Facebook recognized Soldiers Inc. as one of the top social games of the year. Subsidiary. Okay, let's check out that then. What is Polarium? What is Polarium? Polarium, a subsidiary of. Wait, what? What is Polarium? Oh, actually, I should say, what company is Polarium a subsidiary of? All right. Rumble Entertainment Inc. What's that? Develop schemes. Also independent. Okay, let's check out this one. Small team. I don't know. What's in here? I obviously I clicked on that. I didn't see anything. And operate as a wholly owned. We were acquired by Aristocrat. There we go. In October 2017, Operate is a wholly owned subsidiary. So they're kind of doing their own thing, even though they are owned by the other company. But let's see what a Christ aristocrat is. Aristocrat company. <laughs> aristocrat leader, bringing joy. Uh, oh, let's see what this is. Uh, it's taken from okay you got a bowl I don't consent <laughs> well there's the gambling aspect uh, well let's see what this is our business explore uh, 
da, 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 da. land-based businesses our class three casino games are among the best in the world brought to life in our innovative cabinets okay so there it is so raid shadow legends developer polarium is a subsidiary of aristocrat but subsidiary company let's just get a solid definition on this a subsidiary company or daughter company is a company that's owned or controlled by another company which is called the parent company parent or holding company the subsidiary company can be a company corporation or a limited liability company llc in some cases it is a government or state-owned enterprise okay so this is what i was thinking so i used to work for a massive company massive worldwide I mean, we're talking billions in profits per year and regularly grown. My company was huge. And I didn't, I don't think we ever called any of our satellites subsidiaries, but that's basically what they were, was subsidiaries. We acquired tons of companies, tons, like some of them. A lot of the places that you see all the time, my company owned them. But what they did was we bought out a lot of places just so we could acquire their technology because the company i used to work for was a technology company i mean i don't know if i think i made some videos talking about my background how i have an engineering background and such so yeah i've i work in engineering and this company i worked for was uh heavily technology based and so in order to get new technologies that maybe were patented or something <laughs> they would just buy out a company that way then they're not you know they're not infringing on the other company's patent or what have you because now it's their company <laughs> but anyhow other than doing that just so they could steal steal if you will for lack of a better word the patent they my company typically left all their satellite companies alone we didn't really dabble in what they did yeah we owned them but we just let them do their own thing still so they basically were their own company still just under our umbrella so <laughs> The point I'm trying to get at is, even though I guess technically Plarium is under Aristocrat, and Aristocrat is a gambling company, it doesn't mean Plarium has to be invested in um, uh, the gambling aspect of things. I mean, it said itself that it is. Can I find that? That it is. Um, where did I see that? Yeah, wholly owned subsidiary and operate as a wholly owned subsidiary. So I don't entirely know what that means. That either means that they're owned in full by aristocrat or it means that they are owned by aristocrat but do their own thing, kind of like my company used to do with all the companies it bought out. Either way though, just cause it's owned by a gambling company overall doesn't mean that it, it has to be, um, that the subsidiaries, however you say that word, <laughs> have to be involved in gambling as well. You know, just cause that's, you know, that's the parent company's thing. Doesn't mean it has to trickle down to the other companies. So, I don't know. I mean, it does sound like, though, they are ridiculous with the money-hungry part portion of things. I mean, they the ads are insane. And I guess as you progress down the line, it gets hard to get characters unless you pay money. So, who knows? Maybe they are letting the gambling kind of seep into their veins as well. But, yeah. So, that's about it. Um, raid, I don't like. It seems like it's popular opinion um i'm definitely going to be deleting it now <laughs> now that i see that it's popular opinion i mean if i saw a lot that said positive then i'd stick it out like maybe i'm just an idiot but nah after doing this reviews and stuff i see nah it's not me it, it does suck <laughs> so, so yeah no more raid videos coming up <laughs> um yeah and i think that's it so thanks for checking this out and until next time i said see ya